Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video, we are going to cover a very hot topic in NHL 21, one that I wish I would have done earlier on in the season. But it's been pretty evident all year long in NHL 21 that the force cross crease backdoor play uh, has just been an absolute gong show. You see passes get through three different bodies and somehow end up on the tape of your opponent and there's really nothing you can do to defend it. In my opinion, manual defense is literally all just about you making sure the stick is in the direct path of the puck because it seems like the manual AI or manual control player just doesn't make any moving animations to intercept a pass. So that means you've got to be perfectly in the lane, and that's just almost entirely based on luck. I talked to the gameplay developer for EA NHL 21, and that would be Ben Ross, and he brought up a point about how he wonders if it's because everyone uses their defenders switched. So obviously left-handed defensemen go on the right side, right-handed defensemen go on the left side, and that's because of the one-timer option, and that's pretty much been the same thing for the last 10 years of the game. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting because whenever the gameplay developed before NHL mentioned something that a reason was, you know, that something might be happening in game, I kind of take note, and I thought, hey, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I will be the chemist for this experiment. So I spent 20 games with my defensemen, flipped on their strong side so lefties on the left hand righties on the right hand i streamed them all and this is hut champs i finished with 16 wins um of hut champs so it wasn't like it was easy matchups and then i play in division one i think i have like 2200 cr so it's not, again not easy matchups and i found some pretty interesting statistics when it came to my gameplay so we're gonna break all that down i'm gonna show you a ton of clips and uh yeah I, maybe there's a new meta in nhl 21 now i need to preface this by saying i don't know if this is going to you know, drastically change everyone's gameplay. I can only tell you what I found when I did it. So again, here's a look at my defense. It's elite. It's max, you know, defensive awareness, 99, 98, 99, 99, 99, and 99 for defensive awareness. For anyone that doesn't know, defensive awareness is the stat that improves uh, puck intercepts and defending of passes and whatnot. So that is the stat that we are looking for. Same with stick checking. That's a very important stat as well. Every one of my defensemen are all 99. So I switched them all. And again, like I said, it is something that's uh, pretty interesting that I found. Uh, I do need to note, so over the course of 489 games I've played with Vasilevsky and t minus 20, so 469 games that I played with Vasilevsky, his goals against average was 3.76. So I was averaging basically almost four goals against per game. I think that anywhere around three, 350 is kind of what everyone is averaging. I know that there's a lot, probably a lot more elite players, but goals just seem to go in far more often in this game than prior years. Uh, usually about 80% save percentage was kind of like the norm. 75 seems to be the norm for a lot of players. And I struggle with the cross crease backdoor one-timers. So uh, that was his stats going into this. And again, that's what I use as my indicator over the course of 20 games is if there was a difference in terms of goals against. Now, the one thing that everyone is going to point to is, hey, but now you can't score D to D one timers. And I score quite a few of them. It's something that I take advantage of because I have such good defensemen. Something I noticed is that it is not nearly as important if you know how to cycle the puck and use behind the net. And the advantages on defense are definitely there. So let's get into the gameplay fix. And again, uh, I need to preface this by saying, I don't know if this is going to fix everything for you guys. It's just whatever I noticed. I'm not going to recommend you guys do it. I recommend you guys try it out. That's all. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so the first thing I want to point out is that while defending that rush, they seem to not switch when following a player. So if you've been playing and, and noticed throughout this year that sometimes your defensemen will just switch for no reason, almost as if to say that they are like coded to play on the correct side, even if you have a righty playing on the left hand and left hand playing on the right side. In this case, I've noticed a lot of that has not happened anymore when defending the rush. They seem to follow the correct players and stay on their side of the ice. So that was a huge benefit that I've noticed throughout this so far. Another plus I found was while defending the rush down the boards, because your stick is actually the proper way and not on its backhand, I found that it was really easy to get your stick in between the puck and the net and force your opponent towards the boards. There's many times I was able to stop a rush when if it was the opposite way, uh, he just wouldn't be able to do it and I'd have to try and make sure I time a hit correctly or a poke check perfectly. And this was just an added benefit of just playing my guys on the right side. All right, now let's talk if it actually helped with cross ice, one-timers, and passes through the middle. And I'm not going to lie, I have never noticed so many pass intercepts in a game. 
And again, I don't know if this is the best way to play NHL 21, especially competitively, because it's really just kind of against the grain. However, I did talk to some pro players that are currently, you know, in the running to win the GWC this year. And it actually turns out that they've been using correct handed defensemen this whole year. I noticed that throughout almost all my games, there was way more passes picked off when I didn't expect it. And I almost went back to that like NHL 20 method um, where I just kind of forgot about my backdoor player because I had trust and faith that he would actually be able to intercept the pass if he was in position. And um, it was honestly a relief so far. Obviously, some passes got through, but the majority didn't. And again, I don't know if it's because my players are on the correct side or if it was just coincidence, but through 20 games, uh, it really was really, really astounding. And then lastly, probably the most common question and criticism to this strat is what about D to the one timers? You're not going to score anything with your defense throughout using this strategy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the fact that I wasn't just relying on D to D one timers was kind of a relief because it made me put the puck down low or look for some passing lanes and not just immediately shoot into some shin pads or just shoot the puck and give up possession. Think about how many times in a game that you actually score with a D to D one timer. Sure, you might take six in a game and score one, but those other five, you could probably lose possession. It's kind of a 50 50 chance. Well, using this strategy, because it isn't such a crutch, I've noticed that my behind the net play is so much better. And when you think about it, if you get it down low behind the net and turn the puck over, um, they've got to come the entire length of the ice as opposed to getting it blocked or losing at the blue line and then giving up a two on one, which happened all the time to me. And I noticed that didn't happen nearly as much because I wasn't using D to D one timers nearly as often. That's not to say that you still can't use DDD one-timers. You can switch them. But the offense that I created with my defenseman, you just take a clapper and shoot far side. This stage of the game, you've probably got defenders that have high shooting totals. It blows by most goaltenders, especially the ones in like the 6 foot to 6 two range. So I didn't really see any loss in offense. All right, guys. So after 20 games, I added up all of the goals that I had against because for whatever reason in rivals, you there's literally no leaderboard or way you can look at recent games, which is a joke. But nonetheless, I gave up 44 goals. So just over two goals a game uh, when my average, you saw the numbers there at the beginning was 3.75. So again, I don't know if that's just circumstance, but I'll tell you this, for the next you know few weeks, I'm going to keep playing like it. I played some top-end players as well today, and I was actually able to win with it, so it didn't cause me any you know stumbles or you know cost me any games. In fact, it helped me win some, so... What an intercept! Bang! Let's go! Same side, Demon Chat! Uh, let me know what you think. I want you guys to just try it out, okay? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, that's fine. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section down below. And hey, who knows? We might be seeing uh, you know, more like realistic hockey in NHL Hockey Ultimate Team. All right, guys. Have a good one.